Hi, my name's Evan Westra. I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of Maryland in the Department of Philosophy, and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my paper, Talking About Minds, Social Experience, Pragmatic Development, and the False Belief Task. So first, I need to thank the conference organizers for putting together a lovely program, and I also want to thank John Michael, Shannon Spaulding, and Robert Thompson for their excellent comments on my draft. So my paper is about the false belief task. Specifically, it's about this finding that um, even though children tend to not pass the standard false belief task until around four and a half years of age, we've recently found in the past 10 years that infants are capable of passing spontaneous response false belief tasks, that is false belief tasks that measure success in terms of anticipatory looking, or uh, looking time, or behaviors like active helping, or even EEG measures, and that they're able to pass false belief tasks at a very, very young age. So how are we supposed to reconcile these two incongruous findings? Now, of course, there's been a lot of controversy about the infancy uh, findings, and there have been a lot of people who've suggested ways in which infants might be passing the false, uh, these false belief tasks without actually possessing a concept of belief. Um, I'm not going to talk about that debate today. The, I want to approach this debate from the perspective of those who take the infancy findings seriously. So if infants do in fact possess the concept of belief and can represent false beliefs, why is it that older children are still failing standard verbal communicative false belief tasks. So the standard nativist reply uh, or response to this question has been to uh, point to the inherent executive demands of the false belief task itself. So the proposal is that uh, younger children still have very underdeveloped executive resources and that the false belief task uh, overwhelms these underdeveloped executive resources and that's why younger children fail. And it's not until they get old enough in these uh, uh, executive functionings mature that they're able to pass. So I think that this answer is partly right but it doesn't really explain all of the variation that we see in when children pass the false belief task. So specifically, um, there's evidence that I talk about in my paper showing that social experience, social and linguistic experience, seems to make an independent contribution to when a child passes the false belief task. So if you're a constructivist or empiricist, you take this kind of uh, this as evidence for showing that children are using social experience uh, to acquire new concepts. But um, this route isn't open to the nativist. So how is the nativist going to explain the uh, how social experience affects uh, develop uh, this kind of development? Well, the answer that I propose is that. The relevant sort of development is pragmatic in nature. And so what I propose is that uh, what children are gaining is experience with the pragmatics of belief discourse. That is discourse that implicitly or explicitly makes reference to belief facts. And so I argue in my paper that belief discourse is actually pragmatically quite tricky and that it takes a novice speaker a while to learn the ins and outs of it. So how does this affect the, their performance on the false belief task? Well, when the experimenter is asking where will Sally look for her ball, this, the experimenter is implicitly asking the child to show off her knowledge of belief facts and her knowledge of psychology. and. Um, from the novice speaker's perspective, this is a pretty weird, unusual question to be asking. And so what happens is that children make, a diff uh, make this Gricean inference about what the experimenter really wants from them and they get it wrong. And so what I suggest instead um, is that children think that the experimenter is actually trying to 
solicit their help and uh, children are very predisposed to be pro-social anyway so they're really interpreting the experimenters query as something like let's help Sally and so they're trying to give the most helpful answer possible and they're systematically uh, and thus they're systematically failing and it's only until children acquire the relevant experience with belief discourse over time that they're able to recognize the true uh, underlying uh, speaker meaning behind the experimenter's question, interpret it correctly, and, get, and give the correct response. Um, I also talk about how this process also involves executive functioning in a number of ways. So that's my paper in a nutshell. I'm really looking forward to the discussion. Thanks a lot.